I have just powered the computer on, and before we enter the BIOS, I need to point something out. This is what is generally called a BIOS information screen. The information goes by very quickly, so I've pressed the pause break key to pause it. Pressing any other key will unpause it. It shows the CPU model, its actual speed in gigahertz, the speed of the memory, and lots of other information that is useful when overclocking. Most motherboard makers cover this information screen up with a logo screen. There's a key to press, typically tab, to hide the logo screen and show this information screen. But you have to hit tab every time you want to look, and a lot of the time the information you need is gone before the tab command takes effect. The first thing we're going to do in the BIOS is make sure that logo screen is turned off. I'll press any key to continue, and on this computer I need to press delete to enter the BIOS setup. This is the BIOS's main menu. It has several menu choices at the top that take you to different sections of the BIOS, and I can use the right and left arrow keys to switch between them. Here's another common type of main menu with its sections laid out on one common page. Just about every motherboard maker uses one of these two layouts. These videos are concentrating on overclocking, so we're not going to get into most of these options. The Home PC Builder videos have a video that covers the BIOS in general and it's lesson one of the computer setup lessons. The logo screen setting in this BIOS is under boot and boot settings configuration. It's called full screen logo and it's disabled so it won't come up. In other BIOSes it can be found under advanced BIOS features called full screen logo show. The default is enabled and you can select it and disable it. I'll hit escape to get back to the main menu. In this BIOS, the majority of the settings that have to do with overclocking are in the AI Tweaker section. Most BIOSes have a selection like this. Gigabyte calls theirs the Motherboard Intelligent Tweaker, or MIT. You can find EVGA's version under Frequency slash Voltage Control. And MSI calls theirs Cell. If your motherboard doesn't have a section like this, or you can't find the options you see here in the BIOS, then you won't be able to overclock the CPU. This is fairly rare these days, but just to be on the safe side, before you buy a motherboard, go to the maker's website, download the motherboard manual, and look for these settings. Next, we're going to find and disable the CPU's turbo mode and power saving features, so we have full control over the speed of the CPU. In this BIOS, the turbo mode and speed step settings are in the AI tweaker, but most are in a different section. We'll go there to disable them all. They're in Advanced and CPU Configuration. First we'll turn off Turbo Mode. I can either press Enter and disable it, or use the minus key to toggle the options. The power saving features include the C1E support, C State Tech, and Speed Step. These are dependent on each other, so if you disable one, a few others may disappear as well. It's the same as disabling them. On a Gigabyte motherboard, these settings are in the MIT and Advanced CPU Core features. You need to disable Turbo Mode, CPU Enhanced Halt, C State Support, and the CPU EIST function. On an EVGA motherboard, these settings are in the Frequency slash Voltage Control and CPU feature. You need to disable Speed Step, Turbo Mode, and CXE function. On an MSI motherboard, the settings are in the Cell menu, CPU Specifications, and CPU Technology. You need to disable Intel Turbo Boost Tech, Intel EIST, and Intel C State Tech. I'll hit Escape and switch to the AI Tweaker, and Speed Step shows as disabled. Turbo Mode has disappeared meaning it's disabled as well. So let's move on to the overclocking related settings. Here we have the CPU ratio setting. This is the multiplier which the stock setting on our CPU is 20. In this BIOS I have to key in the setting directly, which I'll go ahead and do. I don't see the base clock here. In order for it to show up as an option to change, I have to change the AI overclocker tuner setting from auto to manual. I can do this by pressing enter and selecting it or by pressing the minus key to scroll through the options. The base clock 
is at its default of 133 MHz. If we multiply the base clock by the CPU ratio, 133 times 20, we get 2660, or 2.66 GHz, which is the current speed of the CPU. To overclock the CPU, we will increase the megahertz of the base clock, but I will leave it at its stock setting for now. We don't need to worry about the PCIe frequency and can leave it alone. Below that, we see the three other frequencies that will be affected when we change the base clock. The memory frequency setting, which controls the speed the actual memory sticks run at, is called the DRAM frequency, and it's set to auto. I can change that to the speed of the memory we have installed in this computer, which is 1333 MHz, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. The Uncore frequency, which controls the speed of the memory controller and cache built into the CPU, is set to auto. I can press Enter to change it. The QPI link data rate, which controls the speed of the interface between the CPU and the rest of the motherboard, can be changed the same way. Your motherboard's BIOS may be showing the multiplier used to determine each of the settings. For instance, the memory speed of 1333 MHz is the result of multiplying the base clock, which is 133 MHz, times 10. So the multiplier used to get the 1333 MHz speed is 10. The uncore and QPI speeds are a result of the base clock times the multiplier as well. On our BIOS here, only the resulting speeds are shown. After we increase the base clock to speed up the CPU, we will use these three settings to underclock the memory, uncore, and QPI to keep the system stable. To find these frequency and multiplier settings on a Gigabyte motherboard, go to the MIT and Advanced Frequency Settings. The CPU multiplier setting is called CPU clock ratio here. The base clock is called base frequency, and to access it, you need to enable base clock control. The memory multiplier is called the system memory multiplier. The uncore frequency can be changed using the uncore clock ratio, and the QPI link data rate can be changed using the QPI clock ratio. On an EVGA motherboard, you can find these settings in the frequency slash voltage control section. The CPU multiplier setting is called the CPU clock ratio. The base clock is called the CPU host frequency. The CPU uncore frequency is here. You can find the memory frequency setting in the memory feature, and it's called the memory frequency. The QPI setting is in the CPU feature. To change its setting, you need to enable the QPI controller setting. You then have access to change the QPI frequency selection. On a MSI motherboard, you can change the frequency and multiplier settings in the cell menu. The CPU multiplier setting is called adjust CPU ratio. The base clock setting is here. The memory frequency setting is called the memory ratio. The uncore frequency setting is called the uncore ratio. And the QPI setting is called QPI frequency. We will come back to the frequencies and multipliers in a moment. Next, we need to identify the voltage settings. Back on our motherboard, the voltage settings are lower on the AI tweaker. The CPU voltage controls the voltage going to the individual CPU cores. The CPU PLL voltage controls the voltage going to the phased lock loop, which is a control system for the CPU. The QPI DRAM core voltage controls the voltage going to the cache and memory controller on the CPU. On socket 1156 motherboards, this is called VTT voltage. Finally, the DRAM bus voltage controls the voltage going to the memory sticks themselves. On a Gigabyte motherboard, the voltage settings can be found in the MIT and Advanced Voltage Settings. The CPU voltage is called CPU V-Core. The CPU PLL voltage is called the CPU PLL. The QPI DRAM voltage is called the QPI VTT voltage. And the DRAM bus voltage is called DRAM voltage. On an EVGA motherboard, the voltage settings can be found in the frequency slash voltage control menu and voltage control. The CPU voltage is called CPU V core. The CPU PLL voltage is called the CPU PLL V core. The QPI DRAM voltage is called the QPI PLL V core. And the DRAM bus voltage is called DRAM voltage. On an MSI motherboard, the voltage settings can be found in the cell menu. 
the CPU voltage is here, the CPU PLL voltage is here, the QPI DRAM voltage is called QPI voltage, and the DRAM bus voltage is called DRAM voltage. That is all the settings we will be using to overclock. For our first attempt at overclocking the CPU, we are going to leave all of the voltages at their stock settings and see how far we can push the CPU using only the frequency and multiplier settings. To make sure the voltages stay at their stock settings, we are going to directly key them in. If we leave them set at auto, there's a strong possibility the motherboard will automatically increase them when we start manually increasing the frequencies. The default voltages are 1.2 volts for the CPU voltage, 1.8 volts for the CPU PLL voltage, 1.2 volts for the QPI DRAM voltage, and 1.5 volts for the memory voltage. You need to check your RAM to be sure. Some RAM for Core i5 and i7 systems take up to 1.65 volts. The RAM we have installed does take 1.5 volts. For our first overclock, we are going to attempt to get the CPU up to 3.2 GHz. This is a very moderate overclock and shouldn't be any problem. To reach 3.2 GHz, we need to set the base frequency to 160 MHz. 160 times the multiplier, which in our case is 20, gives us 3200 or 3.2 GHz. Your BIOS may automatically compute and show the resulting CPU speed. We don't need to change the PCIe frequency because it's not linked to the base clock. I'll skip down to the DRAM frequency and press enter. Here we are given several speed options to choose from. Our RAM is rated to run at 1333 MHz. We have two settings, one slower and one faster to choose from. If I was to choose the 1604 MHz, the memory would be overclocked far above what it is rated for and would probably cause system instability just on its own, regardless of how the CPU is overclocked. One of the most important rules about overclocking is that you don't want to try to overclock more than one component at a time. If we choose the 1604 option, and go run Prime95 to stress the system, the RAM speed would almost certainly make the test fail or cause the system to restart while Prime95 is running. At that point, we really would not know if the CPU was stable at the 3.2 GHz speed or not. So we will choose the 1282 MHz option. This will be underclocking the RAM, and yes, this will make the RAM slower, but the resulting performance improvement from the CPU overclock will more than make up for it. Next is the uncore frequency. There is a rule here you must follow, and on the right, our BIOS is telling us that we must choose an uncore frequency at least double the speed of the RAM. If I press enter, the top option is just over twice the speed of the RAM, so I will choose it. If you do have 1600 MHz memory, the 1604 MHz setting would probably work for you. However, this would also increase the uncore speed to 3207 MHz, which is a large increase that may also require a QPI DRAM voltage increase. We only want to try overclocking one component at a time, so for testing purposes, you should set your RAM speed like I am, as if you have 1333 MHz RAM. This will allow you to find the maximum overclock of your CPU cores first, and allow you to record the results in your notes along with any CPU voltage increases needed to make each CPU core overclock stable. Once you have found the maximum stable frequency of the CPU cores on your computer, you can then increase the RAM frequency to the speed it is rated at, and increase the QPID RAM core voltage as needed to maintain a stable overclock. We will show you how to do this towards the end of Lesson 5. Last is the QPI link data rate. I'll press Enter on it, and choose the lowest option. You want to choose the lowest option always for the QPI when overclocking. The QPI speed doesn't affect performance very much. We have our frequencies and multipliers set where we want. This is very important. I am writing down the settings. It's extremely important to keep notes while you overclock. If the overclock is stable, write down the temperatures you get from running Prime95 and the CPU score from 3DMark. If the overclock fails, write that down. We are going to be making a lot of settings changes. If we don't keep track, 
it will become overwhelming. I'll move over to Exit and choose Exit and Save Changes and choose OK. To save and exit, I can also press F10 on the keyboard from anywhere in the BIOS. I'll press the pause break key to stop the BIOS information screen, and we can see the CPU is running at 3.2 GHz and the RAM at 1282 MHz. I'll press any key and let it boot into Windows. Let's take a look at real temp. The idle temps are around 57C. Notice the multiplier is locked at 20. The power saving features are turned off so it can't go lower, and the turbo mode is off so it won't go higher. This is what we want while we are testing for stability, temperatures, and performance. We'll use Prime95 on the large FFT setting to find the load temperature. At 10 minutes in, the temperature is around 85 degrees C. This is a very positive sign of a stable overclock. If we were to see an error message in one of these Prime95 windows, or if the system were to freeze or restart itself, these would be signs of an unstable overclock. I'll write down the minimum and maximum temperatures and the length Prime95 was running. Next, we'll close Prime95 and run 3D Mark 06 to benchmark the CPU. If the system can make it through running 3D Mark 06 or Vantage without freezing or restarting, it's another sign that the overclock is stable. The CPU score at 3.2 GHz is 6032 so the system is stable at 3.2 GHz. In the next lesson, we're going to continue pushing the CPU and see how far we can take it with the stock cooler. Then we will replace the Intel cooler with a third-party cooler and see how fast the CPU can go with improved cooling.